It is February the 5th, 2022. Uh, I'm Chris and this is The Future of Photography. The Future of Photography. And of course, introducing Adrian and Jeremiah. How are you doing, gentlemen? Splendid, thank you. Very good, very good. We are back at showing photos today. I think that's so. So, so here's the, here's the thing. Um, you might remember we've done this in the past. We have played with different apps. One of them, kind of our favorite, I think, um, the Pixel Destroyer, the Photo Mangler, the whatever it's called. Uh, it, the name is Decimate, and it's an iPhone app. So, unfortunately, um, I'm very sorry for. The androids among you, but there is uh, probably something that can do these kind of violent things to photos on the Android side as well. So uh, Decimate is new. They changed it. They updated it. They did. Uh, I've they, the interface is. I I I sent a joking message uh, to to the two of you saying it, it's it's finally usable. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's been through yeah, several iterations over the years it's, I, I, to smash p- pixels basically well the thing is it's it's not more ways uh, maybe a couple more but it's yeah it's easier to find those ways now because the user interface yeah. has been like decaffed i mean it's really it, it was very gesture based and now you have actual buttons to press and it's easier to discover how it works i'm quite a fan of the new interface it's here let me let me yeah. let me bring this up beefs. on the screen i got some beefs yeah we got I, we got a few oops that's the wrong one hold on can, can i ask you guys uh, while while uh, while we we fiddle with bringing up the images i found that once i had an image i liked and i hit save image I could never find it. I, I would. It goes in your camera roll. Ex- it goes in your camera roll. There's, yeah, it does not though. No, it no, does no, for no. me. It does. Yeah, it did for yeah, me. Yeah, it doesn't I think show it up might, on recents or anything. It does. I think for it me. might create an album called Decimate as well. Have you checked for an album called Decimate that uh, it's created? You know, I did not, and I'm sure you're right. So it, here's it. here's what it looks like. It is uh it it now has like the image at the top and then you can either take take a picture or you can load an image from your uh from your photos. And then it has these buttons at the bottom of the image and you can uh, like there are two randomize uh buttons which will the first one will randomize the kinds of effects that are used on the picture i think it chooses two randomly but there you can add more if you want to and then there's a randomized params which is the parameters of those effects um, and that gets randomized and uh the, the third one adds that lets you change the blend mode like how is the original picture and the effects going to be blended together if you've ever been in photoshop or any other layer based editor that's that should be quite uh, easy to understand and then the next one is then the last one is the effects stack which shows you the um the different effects and which ones are turned on and off and that's pretty much it right yeah but it is a lot better though as well it's actually do you know what i'm torn because on one hand you know the esoteric nature of the ui was part of the you know part of the decimate thing wasn't it the culture for the last 10 years has been can you actually figure out how to work decimate um uh, <laughs> but the but now now it's a lot more orthodox so so i guess as a creative tool it's a bit more powerful because you can focus your efforts on the creativity rather than working the app well, but i'll tell I, you what before we go any further i'd like to give a shout out to to the developer it's a chap called chris collins and uh, I, I I don't know Chris, um, but I've been a big fan of Decimate pretty much since it launched, which was many many years ago. If I try and flick back through, I think it was 2011 is the most recent version uh, that you can see in the history on the App Store, and that was version 2.0. Mm-hmm. So I mean, this is a, a labour of love o- over a decade. Um, yeah, the, this release is the first major release for two and a half years, actually three three and a half years nearly. Um, and I'd like to just say thanks to Chris for keeping on keeping on because it's an awesome app and a lot of fun. 100%. I've I've just opened it here in the App Store. It's like it's like a dollar. It's yeah. It's it's yeah. basically free. It is wonderful. I like it. Huh. It is. So it is. go ahead. 
So, well, I was just going to say, uh, you know, uh, you're right. The, the user interface has changed. It is a lot easier to use um, and uh, it has a, a couple of new bits in it. But uh, for, those of, for those of you out there who've used Decimate before, uh, uh, it is instantly familiar in the sense that, you know, you, you have pretty much the same menu of effects. Uh, you can randomize them or control them as you wish. Uh, and uh, don't forget, of course, you have to have them in the right order because they're applied in the order they're in the list. So you can move can the list around them? and get different effects that way. Um, yeah, I, I was just fun. I haven't played with it for a while, actually. So it was good to come back to it uh, and, you know, have a play. So the the thing is, you can um, the, the the interesting thing is you can. And we'll, by the way, we'll watch, uh, we'll look at photos in a in a moment. So um, that that is a video show for sure. Um, the thing is that I think there is no way to control anything but the order of the effects as they are applied and if they are turned on or off. Uh, or are there any parameters that you can go into uh, and and say make this a bit different change the number of repetitions or something like that i don't think that's possible i've not found a way to do that so so what you do is pretty much you mash buttons until it looks right that's kind of the 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 the, the process like I, I i i take or load a picture and then i go through randomized effects i mash that button several times and then at one point i go oh that's good and I hope I don't overshoot because I don't think there's a way to go back to the last <laughs> one. So you, you, you've got to stop at the moment that it looks right. And then you, you can randomize the parameters in those. And that, again, you, if you overshoot, that's it. You, can, you, you can't go back. You, it, there's no undo. And uh, I think there, there, there is a way to say favorite effects, though, in groups. So although, although you can't save the exact parameters of an effect, if you find that two effects work nicely together you can save those uh, as a preset um, yes. and have those as being the effects that you apply and i think uh, and and for me usually no more than two effects uh, two two effects applied to an image at any one time for me is the sweet spot because any more than that and it starts to get a little bit incoherent <laughs> yeah well, isn't that there. the point <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah, sure. So it, it, is, uh, yeah. it is an exciting little uh, toy to play with, and don't say I, it goes beyond toy. I think it's a real tool for for artists. And I can I can see Jeremiah holding up his camera. So you're decimating us as we speak, aren't you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> there we go. Oh, there we are. Wonderful, uh, wonderful. I've never looked so good. So Jeremiah, you've been having a play. Tell us what what are your thoughts on this latest version? Um, I, you know, I like it. It seems to be the kind of um, application that one can get very involved with after several drinks. <laughs> <laughs> or, that, or other substances. Or other yeah. <laughs> substances that, that are mind-altering because it, it does provoke a kind of randomness and regurgitation of reality that you just keep wanting to try a oh, one more or a little more random yeah. or punching these things. And so there's a, a, a bit of discovery involved that I think is interesting. What I've tried to figure out and I haven't yet is how to layer, not layer the actual effects, but there's a way to flatten the image. So save the image. But then when I wanted to kind of add say the unmolested image on top of it and blend both the pristine image and the randomized image together, because I, I like that. Uh, I've had to do it by exporting it out and layering it. Um, Have you tried the blending mode, the third button from the left? Uh, yes, and I, then, I, and then I the, live in that button. And then there's the slider <laughs> that you can change the opacity yeah. of the overlay. Yes, and, and it does that very, very beautifully with the effects themselves. But once I've achieved the entire kind of look of the piece, then I really would like very much to add the pristine picture to it. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? And, and, and do the blending there. And the blending modes are very familiar to anyone using Photoshop yeah. or any other 
um, application, they, they all are, they work in the same way by adding light, adding color, reducing it, removing it, etc. Soft light, hard light. So those of, of us who've worked in that world will be very familiar with it, and it's very effective on the, on the application. But once I flatten the image, in other words, I have it, I like it, I want it, then I want to add another image to it, and I haven't figured out how to do it within it, though the implications are that you can. Yeah, I, I don't think it does that. I think it's just not part of it, so you will need <laughs> well, an external editor for that. <laughs> Well, there, there you go. Uh, and and uh, so I did not uh, do that. Um, and um, the images that I've put are, are pure decimate images. Um, and So um, let's, let's look at a few. Let's look at a few. Let, let, let's start with yours. Yeah. I, think, uh, I think this one is one of yours, right? Yeah. So how do we do this? Because we, I have not prepared anything like a before and after thing, just the results. And uh, yeah, I wish. I, I, yeah, it didn't occur to me to put the original picture. Do we do? On. I, do I we do I a little uh, guessing? Guessing what? Is, what? What are we looking at? This one looks like a chandelier of sorts, somewhere. Yeah, yeah, it's a chandelier right above my head right now, and. Um, uh, what I did is that's is that's I, what I you blend. get when you do your homework last minute. <laughs> oh, what's believe around me? Not. Let me take that picture. <laughs> no, believe it or not, this was in my library. I, I had oh, shot this okay. picture uh, several weeks ago, though I, I, I'm admitting I, I could have just grabbed it, but I did not. Um, I like the picture. I like the light. I like the luminosity, and so I and and the original looks quite good. The interesting thing is. There were two blending modes, or one uh, effects mode, which had a kind of pixelation, which you could see, large pixelation, big pixels, and yep. that. Um, mm -hmm. And I feathered the, the pixelated image down. And it didn't pixelate it uniformly, obviously, which is what I liked about it. And then I used a blending mode, which basically reverses the, it turns it into a negative. Ah, so that's come um, from the blending mode rather than the effect itself. Interesting. Yeah, I use both. And yeah. and so that combination really kind of resulted in this. And I, I was rather pleased with the with the results. If um you know, I wish it had a little more um if we're you know, wishes were what is it? If wishes were ponies, what's that saying? <laughs> um but but um I, what I like is a little more color um, control, uh, selectively or masking on it would have been ideal for me. Right. And that's why I use. Do you it. know? What? I think I think last time we we discussed this app on on this podcast, Jeremiah. I think uh, at that time you you mentioned that actually, in some ways, it was a bit frustrating for you, and you'd prefer to have a little bit more manual control rather than have to do, as Chris described just a few minutes ago, the finger mashing thing. <laughs> You know what? What I want yeah. from 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 Decimate, I want those those randomized buttons to be much much bigger because you keep pressing them so often that you end up. Uh, I, I I would make the entire bottom half of the screen just two big buttons: <laughs> randomize effects and randomize parameters. I think, I yeah, think if I that. remember my I remember the pictures that I put up there and and. Um, I, I felt that the best use of Decimate at that moment for me was to use it very delicately. Because I remember it was sort of a landscape shot. I think, Adrian, you put some stuff of a field up there from my mm, memory. Yes, I did. Yeah, well remembered. Um, yeah. It, it, it is, is there. And I thought that, the, and I remember Chris commenting, oh, it's very subtle use of it. And then that's what I liked about it, that, that there was some recognizability of so the original. This one is not very subtle. Where did you find a Christmas tree? <laughs> uh, right outside. Right is outside that a tree? My window. It is a very large uh, tree. Actually, it's a very large tree. I was just tree. guessing. <laughs> it, but it, yeah, it is. It's a very large tree that, that I, I've managed to kind of pull, <laughs> pull apart tonally and, um, and, and kind of just spread that. I, I, I like the smearing a yeah. lot. Um, I, I have experimented in Photoshop with painting smears, um, which I, I kind of enjoy. And there's some, I, I think I've, put uh, a photographer, Daniel Castellano, I think that's his name. 
mm-hmm. uh, a Montreal-based photographer who uses a lot of that kind of smear techniques. And this would be a perfect uh, image to have combined with the original image. And so that you see the actual tree and then slowly and subtly the smearing kind of pulls away rather than <laughs> what you have. Well, but this uh, is no, anything but true. subtle. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, I really like this one. I think it's great. And this, this, this one is a sim- similar in a similar vein, just just a bit more mm-hmm. horizontal. Yes, uh, except that this, this is an image that it was corrected and uh, corrected by the perspective. It was shot as a um, a vertical image. Uh, the original image is of a stream um, that that is moving through uh, forested or, or kind of ground cover, um, and and uh, I used um, something called. Inception, I think it was, to kind of do, double it up. And so the beginning of the, the, the river kind of widens for those of you just listening. It, it starts as a small screen, a stream and then widens at the base. And I flipped it and just used the very, very narrow uh, portion of it. And it looks absolutely realistic, even though it's an imaginary landscape. Um, and then I applied the kind of, uh, I was trying to achieve some of the realism at the very top. You can kind of see where the, the kind of uh, forest is. Uh, and then I smeared it and then I thought, no, this looks like a sonic effect. <laughs> like, it does, like a, a waveform of something. Like or a waveform, yeah. yeah. Or a spectrum, a or spectrum, a Bitcoin, sound spectrum, yeah. Or a Bitcoin price. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's the, I think that's just the sign of a true artist you d- tell him to use one tool and he uses 12 <laughs> well the, the, the thing is Chris in my defense and I will I will gather my resources to defend this the original image was already in my bank so I had uh, done the manipulation quite separately and I thought oh this is a good image to yeah. decimate your excuse and, and so I, didn't, I didn't actually originate the entire multiple process uh with you know i didn't cheat that is fine <laughs> okay i'll i'll be I'll, I'll be bringing up a couple of mine that. yeah you, you're you're, you're, you're okay you're okay i'm just teasing okay. um <clears throat> so um i've i've been i've been experimenting with like glitches also in video and in other areas especially with a with a show that i've been producing like a little news show for an online event and uh, we had like a lot of transitions that are very glitchy with with sounds and things like that and uh, and this reminded me of this this is just a black and white photo that i took a few days ago and i pulled this out of my archive and um and 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 randomized the effects and then i I've, I've came across this blind uh horizontal stripes kind of look and i like this and what i really like is how it it, it looks like it's it's picked out of individual areas into little subframes and then there's even a sub subframe and then the the vertical of these wind turbines that you're seeing there is kind of broken up on the left but not on the right so it was a weird kind of a a, a breaking up of this and yeah this 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 was exactly that kind of an aesthetic that a that I went, okay, I have to stop mashing buttons now. I have to say oh, this. Like, this is a good one. I like that, yeah. yeah so can you, like- can you um, tell me, and maybe Adrian knows the answer, but in the development of these, is it um, using sort of a randomized algorithm to, to basically just chew it up and and switch it up based on luminosity or tonality or I don't think it cares where it is in the frame I don't think it cares yeah I mean cares. I think I think that there's something going on in some of them um I, I couldn't tell you what of course because yeah don't, don't, don't know the developer but I have noticed that some of the effects seem to uh, bypass areas of greater detail in a shot um, so if you have if you have a shot that where, where perhaps and perhaps it does that by way of trying to isolate the subject in a in a simplistic way. <laughs> so sometimes when you have a face 
uh, the eyes will be left because there's a lot more detail in the eyes um, uh, and, and sometimes the eyes will be left uh, without so much of the effect uh, or, or just generally something that is a little bit more intricate and detailed in, mean the, in eyes. the way that it's presented. So, <laughs> yeah. So, this so next one is a scary shot, Chris. Adrian, I, I think I think you are giving the algorithms too much credit. I believe that you are looking for patterns. Then, and you, of course, when you look for patterns, you'll find them. Good point. Uh, if you search for them, I I wish. Well, maybe. Hey, Chris, Chris Collins, if you're listening to this, um, come on the show. We'll talk about this. Yeah, it'd be great to I'll talk be, to you. Be well, happy to do that. So uh, about this picture, uh, this is just a weird selfie of mine. Um, it looks quite happy when you look at the original, and I pressed the randomize button a few times, and then, <laughs> then and then I and then I came across this blood red. I mean, this looks gruesome this looks like an, someone was in an accident of sorts and it's uh, a movie it looks like poster. the movie poster for a cheap 1970s horror well, movie. sort of sort of <laughs> yeah, and and yeah, and then and then i i i added a few manual effects to it that mangled it a bit more so i thought this is a this is a horror movie thing yeah absolutely so the color scheme the the bloodshot eye which is not bloodshot in reality at all <laughs> So it, at least not yeah, that badly like anyway. The, the yeah. broken the broken nose, which is not broken at all. So it's it's I, I just I just thought you do yeah. look like you've just you do look like you've just been mugged or something. It is like be, beaten up and left my, dead in that's, a back that's, alleyway. Somewhere. That's the result of my first boxing match. That was looks like what it looks like. <laughs> and last but not least, um there's another very weird one. And it comes down to the yeah. To the source material. If you look closely, you can spot a face, like a doll face. In there uh, is that what it is? I saw a nose and I thought, I wonder if this has been somebody with really curly hair that you've taken a photograph of or something So, like that. again, the super weird situation. There's a park nearby with which has like weird art and there is a, a whole corner of it. it. A rainy day and uh, Monica and I went for a walk there and uh, there was a, a corner there w with trees and, and weird dolls and things. <laughs> strung to them it was a, 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 one of those displays of someone who had like probably bought up a, a bunch of like 20 different action figures and dolls and things and made them into art that they distributed okay. across this corner in the in the forest so we were we were there shooting like, like really really cr weird we weird is the only word that i can come <laughs> up with and uh and uh, it was um, it was fun. It was really fun to play with that. And uh, then and then I had this photo, and I just threw it into decimate. This is the, I think one of the first effects that came out. It's like oh, I'll leave it just like that. Just a little hint of a person in there, and the rest is all curly hair with a weird color, and that worked for me. It it is fun. There, there's things, um, you know, stuff like this. I wonder, <laughs> should it be printed out? You know, a, a me medium size, not enormous, but but medium size printed. You know, you could you could end up with some really interesting stuff because I and I think I, I'm not quite sure oh, yet. Here's I've, the original, nailed... by the way. Ah, uh, <laughs> so oh, I see. Okay. Gives you an, gives you a bit of an idea. That's interesting. So you've used black and white uh, as as a source material. As a source, that is interesting. I had uh, because I've done that as well. Add the colors, yes. Yeah, I've done that as well on at least one of mine. We'll talk about that in a minute. But um, I, 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 I'm not sure that you know a small phone screen does the output of decimate justice. I do feel that some of these things would be bigger. Yeah, it would be better bigger and printed. You know, sort of poster art almost. G Gursky um, size. Yeah, so, I don't yeah. know what would be the you know let's let's print them out. Yeah, you know, maybe not a meter by a meter squared, but maybe you know what's a couple of feet squared, uh, sixty centimeters square yeah. or something like that. Well, you know, the good news if you blow it up Gursky size, that the pixelation of the image only enhances the effect. <laughs> well, exactly, exactly. In the, in so the I, th so I people think people would be bigger genius. Especially where you get these ones with big pixel shapes, right? The, but with detail in them, and you could, yeah, you know, if you could like sort of use these good and um, up up resing algorithms these days to get them to to still have detail. You know what? You know what? 
take take one of these really mangled photos and throw it into one of those AI upraising algorithms that will not only uh, uh, make it bigger and try to keep the the edges sharp, but it will try to replace things with what it thinks it is. And then I think you yeah, could come up with a totally new art form this way. Do you know what we want? Jeremiah, when you get home, um, throw a couple of them up on your... Um, you've got one of those uh, Samsung TVs with the frames that look like paintings, yeah, haven't yeah. you? Yeah, throw yeah. them up on that and see what you think and report back because I'd be uh, really interested to see what they look like as wall art. Yeah, I think so. And and I can add a mat to it so it formalizes it. And, and uh, you know, yeah, yeah. See that I think that could work really. You can, I, I you think, can use my, my, my bloody face on that. You will that yeah, maybe not that one. Scare the neighbors. <laughs> In my and, living room would be great. Yeah. Mm. Uh, by the way, the, but, you know, I think that this, the, the conversation about decimate provokes a bigger question about um, abstraction, um, interpolation, <clears throat> freedom in non-preciousness, um, using our cameras or iPhones um, for just pure capture and then and, and then kind of digging in and, and balancing the randomization with some kind of control, being comfortable with giving up control, but recognizing when a certain image hits a certain visual parameter that provokes a reaction, which is the finished image. And I, I think that that is true, you know, while Decimate is kind of built to that, almost uh, every uh, form of photo editing technology has that either in a minority or a majority of effects that you, and we call them effects, but you know, we call also call them edits. So replacing a color may be invisible, but it is a radical change of the original. Um, blowing up pixels, that's another thing. Pixelization, changing colors, complete destruction of the formalization of the form. All of these are a good lesson. Uh, and and we've, we've crossed this path before where slow shutters and abstraction and photography and that, that feel feels very liberating um some people are so self-conscious of like taking a good picture that they 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 don't allow themselves the pleasure of just seeing what happens of, of not being right. highly technical about it and and that is a whole part of photography that i i, I adore i love and Combining it with formalism is something that really gives you um, the sum of the parts, which are, I mean, gr something greater than the sum of the parts. Yep. Often. Mm. Absolutely. So, Adrian, your photos. Okay. All right. Uh, now, this one, this, this one is uh, a photo from my commute, uh, which at the moment takes me from Waterloo Station to Blackfriars Road and then straight up north across Blackfriars Bridge and beyond. Um, at the north side of Blackfriars Bridge uh, in London at the moment, uh, they are building a new embankment along the River Thames. And this photo is of the entrance to the construction site. You know, they often have turnstiles these days for ah, security and safety. And there's this little old chair that sits just beside the turnstile. And it's a bit rope. It's both the fabric's all torn and the foam has got bits this missing. This is from, from someone's it. living room. It, it uh, yeah, or a sort of you know, uh, uh, you know, a sort of office waiting room kind of chair, you know? <laughs> right? And and I've got tons of photos of this chair because I walk past it, and I've, one day I hope to like see somebody sitting there and have the guts to go up and say hello, are you enjoying the chair? You know, and introduce <laughs> myself. But so so I, I I thought this would be a great one to to play with, and this is a a, a relatively. Uh, benign decimate effect um it's added some some you know loomy green and loomy pink colors to to you know what was a, a fairly basic photograph but you can still see that you've got a chair there and a little alcove and it's you know it's beside the pavement and i just thought i, I like this it's you know I'm, I'm trying different ways to take photos of this particular chair over time so this was a nice chance to play with that and see what i could get out of it i can make an entire chair exhibition Oh, I, I could do, yeah. Ah, no, this one. Okay, what are we looking at here? Is that fireworks? 
It is. Good oh, spot. Okay. Yeah. So this is, um, I'm sure I've talked about this before on the podcast, but uh, my little Olympus point and shoot camera has a firework mode that essentially, uh, it, uh, it whether it takes multiple exposures or one long exposure, I'm not sure, but it tidies them up nicely and it produces you a really nice image of a firework uh, as it spreads. You know, uh, and of is- course that's... This is the kind of modes, the sports mode, the fireworks mode, the food photography mode, and whatever modern cameras have, that I always ignore. Completely ignore, but I should probably look at them more because they do <laughs> have too. a merit. So, so, you, so you should, um, but but um, don't expect them all to be great. Um, so it would be my <laughs> experts. So, so some of them are really nice. And on my little Olympus camera, uh, the firework mode is really nice. The sunset mode works really, really well. It does something with the colors that makes it really pleasing aesthetically. Um, and so there are there are a, a, a couple or three of these things that work really well, and then there are a good handful that don't work quite so well, or at least that I haven't managed to get to work quite so well. But fireworks, this is absolutely my go-to camera if I'm going to see fireworks, and you get these really beautiful patterns because, of course, you know, against the firework, the night that the sky is basically black, so you get just the shape of the exploding firework, which is great. And I thought that would be a really good candidate for decimating. So the the underlying image is is mostly of a of a gold coloured firework exploding, but as you can see, it's got some sort of negative type colours in. It's spread the pattern horizontally. It looks like it's the similar sort of effect to what Jeremiah had on his big vertical tree, but applied yes. to a, a firework. Um, and I just really like this. I did half a dozen of these, and this one was my favourite at the end. So I was really pleased. What happens so, if you take people portraits with the firework mode? Does that uh, work? not really i think it i can't remember but i think it comes out all smudgy but it could be another another art form like the the using the wrong mode for things or the Mm -hmm. opposite mode for things that's a good point yeah that's cool i like what decimate made of that yeah okay yeah it's a nice one that one Uh, it's it's good good to know and then my last one Uh (laughs) aha so this actually this 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 picture actually I made for a different project. <laughs> um, so over on the Sunday Sixteen podcast, we've had a theme for the month of January, the theme of desires, um, and this was uh, so. This is a close up of a Skittles packet taken in a really crunchy black and white JPEG mode. Uh, so the underlying image of this particular one is crunchy black and white. Uh, and uh, it is decimates that has added the the pattern and the colours. Um, I think this this is the sort of thing I think um, this particular one I th- this particular underlying image I'm going to play with more. I, I've done a um, uh, I did another one version of it the other day where I just overlaid a rainbow gradient. So I, I put I put a, a gradient overlay on it and I put you know, four or five points in the gradient to try and get most of the, the, the spectrum of colors so that it would have, yeah, it would have, I'm almost replacing the Skittles rainbow, right? But, but with an overlay right, you know, on top of a really crunchy black and white photo. Uh, and just playing around with it and things. And this is, this, this again, I think, um, I think this sort of thing would look really good you know 60 centimeters by 60 centimeters two feet by two feet hanging on the wall uh, as a feature in a in a fun part of the house or, or something I like, like that, that That's... effect it it is reminiscent of like um i remember back in my childhood it was all the rage to have this te- television feedback where they would film the picture <laughs> off a yeah. monitor and then you get this this repeating flowing pattern um that that's back what in the days of hardware of. video effects do you know which, the, the, that which are very, that reminds very me of familiar uh, that reminds me of um one particular tv show they did it a lot but one particular tv show here in the uk it was called top of the pop oh, top of the pops i get. thought about this yes yeah and it was it was used constantly that effect that you're describing the, on the german the equivalent pops. was called disco yeah we had okay. that too <laughs> <laughs> you know, and and in, by the way, in the um, a few years ago, I did um, something called the Bronx is Burning, a mini series about 1977 New York City politics, baseball, and murder, <laughs> basically, um, and all the graphics of that time had that had that look, of course, uh, especially in sports. Um, they would all you know throw it down, even you know 
television shows. Ep Jeremiah, um, have you ever worked with a Scanimate? Does it does it that ring a bell? That familiar. What is it was it yeah, was one of these bell. one of these weird graphics processors analog but it made very digital things that could make flying logos and things but um it was more of an art form than an, and, and it had lots of knobs and it have, was yes 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 and, and joystick something yes, like yes, that yes 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 it, it, it brings back a uh, I've seen it, I've seen a feature I've, about the Scanimate um system <laughs> which was interviews with people who actually worked with it and they all and some some of the some of the decimate stuff reminds me of Scanimate so um there's a there's an entire documentary somewhere out there about that system which oh uh, we yeah. should look for one on eBay <laughs> no Definitely. you it's will like getting an analog. we're talking living room sized hardware we not it's not a thing you put on your <laughs> desk no 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 <laughs> Not at all. Sounds like fun, uh, though. Well, <laughs> fun. That was early yeah. digital style effects without using actual yeah. digital technology. Anyway, that was cool. Thank you so much for, for uh, bringing your photos. Um, again, Chris Collins, the maker of Decimate, if you're listening to this, if you're watching this, then... Uh, Help us. Give us, yeah. give us He's a, very welcome to come on the show. Yeah, We'd love say, to talk to you. Say hello. We'd love to talk to you. Um, and with that, let's move on to the picks of the week and i'll start with one that is th oh i have to switch the thing to the browser there we go um i'll start with one that is a product of mine a new one which is a magazine called the cm magazine which uh mm. is um which is it is it's in german so it's not really much use for you guys but um it is a weekly magazine where i talk about and where I mostly write about things that interest me so it's kind of a, a blog in that sense but not a blog it's more of a newsletter kind of thing and then there's um a, a, an additional kind of layer to it which is um me talking to people about these things so we're, we're discussing the articles and it's a uh, it's a uh, yeah, it's a little project that the, yeah. the, the reason I started it was because I was looking for a kind of a, a way to force myself into writing regularly again because I haven't done this in like the entire pandemic I haven't really been writing and writing is is a very important process for myself so I I need that exercise because it exercises my brain it helps me it helps me order my thoughts and get some structure into my thinking so um i'm doing you know this it's coincidental now. it's very coincidental that it's called cm magazine <laughs> well they do know there's there's, there's, a fortune. <laughs> there's a there's a german magazine uh, in paper form that i used to read as a teenager which was the, the pm magazine which is a uh, <laughs> The initials ah. of the guy who used to make that, and it was about yeah. all sorts of things. Uh, the topics here are complete. I mean, there's photography in there, of course, but the topics are like other stuff that is me: mobility, um, virtual reality, artificial intelligence, um, space. I mean, there's just like all these kind of things that have no other place to go. So that's why I, I'm, I'm glad to see that you've managed to get a Star Trek reference onto the front page. I'm Absolutely. That, that, that Absolutely. does it for me. That does it for me. <laughs> there you go. Now you only have to translate it. Um, let's see. Adrian, you brought us a link to a YouTube channel. Uh, it's, it's a researching resource. Um, so for, uh, I don't know if this is a, 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 a british thing particularly i suspect not but there are a ton of youtube channels uh where people who are you know uh they're interested in architecture or local history or anything like that you know are uh and they put you know videos of walks and things like that this this particular chap chap called john rogers is a bunch of really interesting videos kind of, kind of nerdy kind of interesting about london and its history and its buildings and its people and stuff like that and he's he's a walker so he he sort of the context for this is he'll do a video of a particular walk i mean sometimes those walks are you know a couple of miles long sometimes he's only focusing on just a few hundred yards of one street because there's so much to talk about and i just they're fantastic for researching photo walks so i think it would just just uh, I mean, they're fantastic anyway, just because of the information and knowledge in them, and they're great. And this is just one example. Uh, is that a, a genre? Channel. Is that something that you can look for certain keywords and it find is. these things? It is. 
It, you can find it in almost every city. There, there are people like this. Um, but what would you look for? What would you look for? Um, is it just walking, walking, walking towards historical yeah, interest? Yeah, yeah. That kind yeah. Of thing. and I think it just yeah, for those of us that yeah, especially those of us that get to spend quite long periods of time in the same city. I mean, cities are you know vastly you know different yeah you know, vastly varied places and you know long you know you can, you can walk around cities and you can see different things and you can live in cities for years and years and years and not know half of what's there so Very i true. just this a great example uh, of a, a great type of resource for helping explore and finding good photos all right and uh last but not least jeremiah what is this i haven't clicked into the website yet i'm just uh <laughs> I've just been staring at the animation of the guy, uh, like bobbing his head in, in front of his car, watching the sky. I would say this is a analog radio randomized interface uh, because we were talking uh, estimate and whatnot. It, it, Lo-fi it dot just, cafe. It's just fun. Let me um, see. Worth exploring. I'm just pulling it up here. Probably gonna get a content strike or something for the music. And it's just like some beats. And you just can keep keep clicking. It's very. Um, it has a bit of a. It has a bit of a decimate feel to it. In some yeah, areas. it does. Yeah. I threw it up there. The I, visuals. It, it, I like the glitches when you when you change channel. It's like all. All staticky and so on. That's oh, good. Yeah, and if you look at the one. bottom, you know, like space station, space lo-fi hip hop radio, hip-hop, yeah, but, chilly lo-fi know. beats, <laughs> lo-fi, lo-fi. I like this. I'll leave this open in the background for later tonight. Yeah, listening it's to some beats. It, 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 it's one of those obscure, randomized, odd, sonic sonically configured but i also like the visuals it's on it beautiful are mm. really interesting and and i thought little know, pixel animation somehow yeah. connected yeah it, it felt connected to decimate in mm. my and a cat mind. yeah definitely everything that has <laughs> cats in it is a good thing so there <laughs> we go yes. yeah so there well we go. well well that was that was a cool episode i like this i really enjoyed this a lot so <laughs> yeah me too so um decimate let's all decimate pictures maybe we'll get to talk to the developer sure. maybe not oh, let's find out and ah, maybe uh, not. do you know i tell you one of the things i've learned from this though is that i think with regard to the future of photography really punishing pixels is definitely part of the future of photography <laughs> Yeah. definitely has its place <laughs> it does have its place and it's what fun. happens after pixels oh oh that's oh very this is very we'll leave you with that thought yes we'll, we'll leave you with that thought and we are of course at thefuturephotography.com you can find us online at tfob now um we'll be back the next week until then everyone bye bye You've been listening to The Future of Photography. Subscribe to the show wherever you get your other podcasts. Find the show notes and more information at thefutureofphotography.com. Hold up. 